Thorpe. All right. Today we're talking about Chapter 3, Section 5, the Algebra of Functions and Composite Functions. Now, this particular section does get a little crazy um, in terms of, you know, trying trying to uh, think your way through through the problems. But as I mentioned before, th those are the problems that I prefer as opposed to uh, the the mindless computation. Okay. So the algebra function. So basically, when we talk about when we say algebra, we're we're, we're talking about you know solving for unknowns. Okay. So uh, when, whenever we're, we talk about the algebra of functions, we're talking about you know combining our our, our functions, our unknowns, um, and getting these the the sum, difference, product, and quotient. All right. And the thing is, they behave exactly like you think they would. Right. So the sum of f and g, and again, f and g, those are names of functions, right? Remember how I've said before that, you know, we use x and y and z to name variables? Well, f and g are very common names for functions, right? So in this uh, example, or not example, but um, I guess definitions here, uh, we are, we, we, we talk about f and g, the sum of them, well, that's just basically, uh, if, if we, the notation was f plus g of x, all right, that's the notation, that's the same thing as saying f of x plus g of x, okay, and I, and I understand that just seeing this doesn't really, does not really mean much to you, so, we, you know, we'll obviously do examples, but uh, moving forward, one, two, and three, they're all exactly how you think they would be, right, uh, if we had this notation f minus g, well, that's just simply saying f of x minus g of x. Uh, if we had this f uh, times g of x, then that's just f of x times g of x. Okay, and and I stopped at I, I stopped at three, but realistically four is pretty much the same, except for it has one little added rule, and that rule is that g of x cannot be equal to zero, which we know is true, right? Because we, we if g of x is in the denominator, we know that it cannot be equal to zero, otherwise we have an undefined uh, function. Okay. So let's do the algebra of these functions. Alrighty. Starting with a, all right, so we've got, uh, well, first of all, we, we, we see that we have f of x is equal to 12 over 2x plus 4, and g of x is equal to the square root of x, all right? And um, a is f plus g of 1, okay? So on, on the example, or not example, but the definition on the previous page we had of x, well, the x in this particular case is going to be 1, right? So there are two ways to go about doing this. Let me see how I can put fit those both in. Okay, so so there are two ways to go about doing this. All right, we'll start off with doing a. And the first way is to just go ahead and do the f plus g, okay? So if f of x is 12 over 2x plus 4, we're just going to put 12 over 2x plus 4, and then plus g of x, which is going to be the square root of x. Alright, and that's it. Uh, I said two ways to do this. Realistically, we're not going to do it the other way. I feel like I might, I might complicate things. I do that quite often. I'm sorry. Um, but this is f plus g of x. Okay, now if we want to do it f plus g of 1, well, all we have to do is rewrite this but instead of putting an x, we're going to put a a 1. So we'll put a 1 here. Actually, let's not do green. I like to reserve green for the finale. Uh, okay. All right. Well, that is what f plus g of 1 looks like, right? Again, we just put 1 everywhere we, where we see an x. Okay, let's just do some mental math real quick. So we got 12 over, okay, so 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, 12 over 6 is 2. So that is, this is 2, and then what is the square root of, of 1? Well, that's just 1, so 2 plus 1 is 3. So my solution here is 3. Okay, let's do b. Again, we're just going to start off. It's an f minus g, and it's, it's still of 1, but let's go ahead and do this. So basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much rewrite what I wrote in a, but instead of an addition sign in the middle, we're going to put a subtraction sign. Okay. And then same thing here. We're just going to put 
12 over, and then 2 times a positive 1, plus 4, and then minus the square root of 1. Okay, and again, uh, same same mental math here, right? Uh, two over two over six is two. I'm sorry, twelve over six is two. Two minus one is going to be one. All right, C is f times g. So now we're now we're gonna just multiply these two together, okay? So it's going to be uh, 12 over 2x plus 4 times times the square root of x, okay? We know we can rewrite that as 12 on the square root of x over 2x plus 4 Okay. And then we, uh, that that's again of x, so now we're, what we're going to do now is plug in a 4, right, because that is what we are trying to evaluate at, f, uh, f times g of 4. So we evaluate at 4, we're going to have 12 on the square root of 4 over 2 times 4 plus 4. Okay, well, again, we we'll just do some mental math here. Well, 12 times the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2. 12 times 2 is 24. So I have a 24 in my numerator. Okay, my denominator, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. So I have 24 over 12. So that's just going to be 2. Okay. And then lastly, we have D. We've got f over g I don't know why I wrote that I haven't written that at all alright so it's f over g of 4 so we go, we're gonna write 12 and you know what let's actually give this its own page because fractions over fractions that get, get a little sloppy and I don't want to have to write small or, or, or something to to try and fit it in okay so let's do this again so we've got d my f is 12 over 2x plus 4, okay, and that is over g, which is the square root of x. Now, at this point, you're probably you're probably done. You're like, okay, fraction over fraction, I'm done. I don't like playing this game, and, and I understand where you're coming from. But again, just try to remember, remember that this is the same thing as saying 12 over 2x plus 4 divided by the square root of x, okay, and of course that's, that's essentially, you know, x over 1, right, and then we know that is the same thing as saying times, uh, let's, see, hmm, let's put it, you know, let's just keep it like this, we're just going to get another page going, times the reciprocal there, which is going to be 1 over the square root of x, like so. Okay, and then we know that is going to be equal to, it's going to be 12 over uh, 2x plus 4 times the square root of x. Okay, so let's go ahead and snip that and put it on the next page. Alright, so this is what we have, and then it was of 4. Okay, so so now we have, what we have to do here is uh, plug in 4. So we're going to have a better looking arrow. Let's do that. Okay, there we go. 12 over 2 times 4 plus 4. And this needs to be just a little bit longer. And we're going to center that 12 here in a moment. And then times the square root of 4. Right, put a 12 up here. Okay, so now we have the 12 up top, and we've got uh, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 4 is 12, and then 12 times square root of 4, which is 2, so 12 times 2, which is going to be 24, or in other words, 1 half.
And that is the algebra of functions. Again, it's just, uh, there we go. Uh, it, it be, the algebra of functions behave like you would imagine them to behave, right? If we have the addition sign, then we, then we add the functions, the subtraction sign, we subtract the functions, uh, you know, multiplication, then we multiply and division, then we divide the functions, right? All we're doing here, though, is, again, just thinking of functions as their own entity, right? Um, going back to, you know, f and g, you know, th their, their proper names and so forth. Um, so that is that. Uh, okay, so this is a, I think these are fun, and I know I say that about a lot of things. Let's see, where's, okay, so you're, you're going to come across these on your homework, and again, I think they're fun because, I have to reiterate time and time again, I, I, I hate mindless computation. I would rather look at, look at problems and kind of think my way through them, and this is one of those occasions. And we'll start with we'll start with a. All right. So looking at a. All right. So first of all, the 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 question or, or the problem reads: Use the graph to evaluate each expression or state that it is undefined. Okay. So what we're going to, have to do here is we're going to have to evaluate f plus g of one. Okay. Well, how else do we know f plus g of one? Well, we know that f plus g of one is the same thing as f of one plus g of 1, right? That was what we saw on the very first page right here. Um, f plus g of x is the same thing as saying f of x plus g of x. And of course we can, we, we see that throughout here. You know, we, we can just basically uh, split these, um, split these functions from the left side here to, to the right side. Okay, so uh, we know that we can think of this as f plus or f of one plus g of one. All right. Well, what is f of one? Well, f of one. We look over here. Right at one. Again, when we're looking at the x-axis, right here at the on the x-axis at one. What is f's value? Well, it is positive one. Okay. So it's going to be positive one because that is what f of one is. And then plus. Well, what is g of one? Well, the g of 1 appears to be the same. We go over here to the x-axis at the 1, and we see that the graph there is also at 1. So it's going to be 1 plus 1. And so therefore, my solution is 2. B, we've got f minus g of 0. So we know we can write this as f of 0 minus g of 0. Okay. What is f of 0? Well, f of 0 appears to be, and can we look here at, on the, the graph here, at 0 it looks like my value of f is also 0, so it's going to be 0. Right? And g at 0, well it appears it is a positive 2. Okay, so, uh, so again the blue line right here at x equals 0, which is essentially the y-axis, uh, looks like we are at a positive 2, so it's going to be 0 minus that positive 2, or in other words, 0 minus 2, which is just going to be negative 2. Okay, And C, we've got f uh, times g of 4, so we're just going to write this, f of 4 times, times g of 4. Okay, so let's go to the graph. Well, what is f of 4? It looks like it is 2. Okay, so it looks like we have a 2. And then times, well, that's a better circle. Let's see, can we fix that one? Eh, that's fine. And then what is g of 4? Well, g of 4 looks like it is at negative 2. Okay, so that's going to be 2 times a negative 2, which is going to be a negative 4. Okay. And lastly, let's see, can I, I might put it here? We'll see. All right, so it's f of 2 divided by g of 2. So again, f of 2 divided by g of 2. Okay, and we're just going to have to go down. All right, well, what is f of 2? So f of 2 looks like, it doesn't look like a, a nice, neat number, does it? Uh, it looks like it's about a little under 1 and a half. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, okay, but I mean, look, for the sake of this, let's just say one and a half, okay? 
So it looks like f of 2 is about 1.5. Okay, it's actually about like 1.4, so let's actually be a little bit more precise. So it's about 1.4 divided by, and I said it doesn't matter because what is g of 2? Well, g of 2, we see here, is 0. Okay, so therefore, uh, d is undefined. Okay, so un, undefined. And that's how you do example two. We're going to have another one of these uh, as well in this section. That, uh, again, I think it's fun. Um, but, you know, take your time on these. Uh, think your way through them. And, and hopefully, maybe, maybe you might, you might find them as fun as I do. But we are no doubt about to get into some nice mindless computation. Actually, I don't think right here. All right, from the top, it reads, before learning how to find the domain of f plus g, f minus g, f times g, or f divided by g, you must be able to find the intersection of two or more intervals. The notation, a with an upside down u of b, is used to represent the intersection of sets a and b. To find the intersection of two sets, we must find the set of all numbers common to both sets. Now, <clears throat> the way we do this. All right, now some of you, we, we've, we've done similar exercises in the past. Uh, the way we do these, and some of you might, as I've mentioned before, can, can already just, you know, do this in your head and, and you're good to go. All right, no big deal. Uh, but for, for, for right now, we're just going to draw us a number line. Okay. Uh, but again, if you, if you can do it in your head, good for you. Okay, so a we've got uh, zero to neg zero to infinity intersected with negative infinity to five. Okay, so what we're going to do here? Let's just, we're just going to take up this whole page for this one, I guess. All right, so let's denote let's denote this first um, interval in red and the second one in blue. Okay, so the first one, so let's do, uh, let's put a zero here, uh, looks, looks like a five here, and then the negative five here. Okay, so the first one goes from zero to infinity, okay, and we have a bracket there, so therefore we will include zero, so that's pretty easy, so we're going to put a, we're going to um, put a closed circle here, and we're going to go all the way to positive infinity, a positive infinity that I did not denote, even though we know it's there. Okay. Right, so that's the red. Now the blue is from negative infinity to positive five. Okay, so go, and again we are going to include a positive five. So we're going to put a bracket or a closed circle there, and we're going all the way to negative infinity. Okay. Well, where do these two uh, intervals intersect? Well, they appear to intersect between zero and five. Okay, and I say appear to intersect, they, they do intersect from 0 to 5. So therefore, that is the intersection from 0 to 5. Okay, and, and also we include 0 and we include 5 because we see that there is a closed circle on both, both those intervals. So my intersection is just simply 0 to 5. Right, the next one, the next one looks kind of ridiculous, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be as ridiculous as it looks. Right, so, B. It is saying the union of negative infinity to negative 2 to u negative 2 to infinity. Okay, the union, uh, it's basically just going to be one set, and it's going to be intersected with negative 4 to infinity. Okay, so, same thing what I'm going to do here is I'm going to denote this first one in red and the second one in blue. Now again, the first one is this entire union. Okay. So uh, looks like I need negative twos and negative fours. So we'll put the zero over here. Negative two. Negative four. Okay, so the red one. Uh, again, we're going from negative infinity to negative two, and from negative two to infinity. So basically, this this interval here is just every single number, every single number except for negative two. 
So that's pretty easy. So we're going to go ahead and just put an open circle here at negative 2. And it's all the numbers to the left of negative 2. And all the numbers to the right of negative 2. Okay. And then we've got uh, from negative 4 to infinity. So uh, we are, it looks like we're including a negative 4. So it looks like we're going to go here. Oh. We're including negative 4. And we're going to go all the way to infinity. Okay, well now where do these two intervals overlap? Well, it looks like we're, we're starting from negative 4. Okay, so it looks like we're going from negative 4. All right, and it looks like we're going all the way to infinity, doesn't it? But we're taking a little break here at negative 2. Okay, we don't actually intersect at negative 2 because we have an open circle there uh, from our red interval. Okay, so we're going from negative 4 just to negative 2. We're not including it. All right, and then we're going to union that with negative 2 to infinity. Okay. And that is how we do intersections of functions. All right. And that is important because we're going to be do it, talking about the domains now. Now the domain, oh gosh, that's a, it's a fun conversation to always have. Hopefully you have, um, hopefully you, you have written down, you wrote down, you wrote down my domain Bible that, that, I, that I presented to you I think in 3.1. And you have it memorized. If not, do that. All right, so. Okay, so here we go. Talking about the domains, okay? So, so we talked about the algebra of these functions, just simply adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Now we're gonna talk about the domains of them, all right? Now this might seem like a lot of stuff, okay? But it's not, right? Because if you check it out, right? Every, everything past this, uh, the, past this comma, is the exact same here. Okay, so for addition, subtraction, and multiplication, the domains is just simply the intersection of A and B, but the, the intersection of both of those um, two domains. Okay, well, realistically, well, so is the division. Okay, but again, like every, every single time we do introduce division, there's just one extra rule, and that rule is pretty easy to memorize because we talk about it all the time. We know that the denominator cannot be equal to zero. Okay, so this might look like a lot, but realistically, it's, it, we're, we're, just, we're just talking about the intersection of those two domains, and that's it. All right, so... Let f of x equal to the square root of x plus 1, and g of x be equal to x squared minus 16. Okay, so a reads, find f plus g. That's not going to be too, too hard. Okay, so let's just do, let's do that. Well, if f is the square root of x plus 1, and g is uh, x squared minus 16, okay, well then, f plus g is just basically this. I just I just put the addition sign in between, right? This is f of x. This is g of x. And again, same thing we did on, on the first few examples. It's f plus g, right? And then, you know, we have the addition here. So that's why we we just simply put the addition sign in, in there. Okay. So that is f plus g. Again, pretty easy stuff. Well. How do I find the domain? Okay. Well, again, the domain is just simply going to be the intersection of those um, of these two functions. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, so we're going to write the domain. Okay. Big D, little f. Okay. That's just the notation. That's that's not any notation you have to memorize. You might not ever use it. Uh, well, you won't use it in this course. Um, and of course, if you you know stop here, you won't use it anymore. But that's just how I do it to keep things. Uh, nice and orderly here. So the domain of f. Okay, so f. Uh, let's actually let's do let's do the computation over here. Okay, so I know that y'all yeah, can't see that in there. We'll put it in red. Um, the square root of x plus one. Okay, so I know that what is on the inside there. Okay, again, go back to my domain Bible. Whenever I have the radical, I need to set what's inside the radical. Again, the radicand. I need to set that to greater than or equal to zero. So this means that x must be greater than or equal to negative one. Okay. 
So that is the domain of f. It is x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1, or in other words, looks like from, and again we include negative 1, so from negative 1, okay that's not working too well, let's try that again, to infinity. Okay, so that's the domain of f. Now let's do the domain of g. Ooh. There we go. Let's erase this. And then the domain of g. Well, the domain of g is pretty easy, right? Again, going back to the domain Bible. Uh, if I mean, unless we have a, uh, a a variable in the denominator or a variable in an even index root, then the domain of a function is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's pretty easy, since since this. Ha does not contain a fraction, nor does it contain a an even indexed root, square root, fourth root, sixth root, so on and so forth, then we can simply just say that the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, now that we got to that far, now we need to figure out what the domain of a, um, f plus g is. And going back to the definition, if you forgot, it's just simply going to be the intersection. Ooh. Don't do it in white, let's put it in red. It's just going to be the intersection. So all we have to do is, all right, so on you know, this, our example three here, we just basically have to do example three for this. Okay, well, where do they intersect at? Well, it looks like, and I'm just kind of, I'm kind of not cheap, but I'm just kind of going to do this in my head, right? I know that this is from negative one to infinity, and this is all the numbers, so the domain must be from negative 1 to infinity. Okay, and let's recopy 4 and do B now. Okay, now I say that, but let's actually let's actually re-snip this, because that's going to be used. Oh no. I probably could have added that to library and, and done something with it, but I'm not, I've never actually done that, so I don't want to fool with it right now. Okay. Alrighty, so... Uh, f divided by g, again, that's pretty pretty easy to do. All we have to do is just simply, you know, write f, the square root of x plus 1, and then put that over g, which is x squared minus 16. Okay, in one moment. All right, sorry about that. Alrighty, so that is just f divided by g, Pre pretty easy stuff. All right, now we got to talk about the domain, right? Um, well, may, you know, may, maybe I take it back. May, maybe your homework might want this. Okay, um, I, I noticed that this is a difference of squares, so I'm just gonna go ahead and factor it. I'm not entirely sure your homework might want this, but we're going to do it anyways. Okay. All right. So anyways, now the domain. Okay. So it's going to be the intersection of my two domains. Okay. Same thing. Same thing. Except this time, recall that here, okay, it is the intersection, but we also have to exclude the values that make the denominator equal to zero. Okay. So... What we're going to do here is, there it is, all right, so the domain, again, it's, it's going to be the exact same, so I'm just going to go ahead and snip this, because again, it's the exact same, I could rewrite it, but I really want to emphasize this, ah, crap, never mind, I do have to rewrite it, did that, did that thing again, uh, negative 1 to infinity, okay, so, negative 1 to infinity, okay, all right, so that is the domain, that is the intersection, okay, but now we also have to exclude 
those values that make the denominator equal to zero. Okay. What I mean by that is looking at looking at this problem here. Okay. What makes that denominator equal to zero? Well, a looks like a negative four and a positive four. Okay. So I cannot have negative four or positive four in my domain in what is written in green here. Okay. Well, luckily, negative four is already not in there. So I don't even have to worry about it. Okay, so negative four is already not in there. Don't worry about it. But positive four is. So I must exclude positive four now. Okay. So again, if you want to think about this, this is a number line. Okay, it's going from negative one all the way to infinity. Okay. Well, negative four is over here, but we don't. We're not even touching it because it's not even part of the the intersection anyways. But positive four is. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is what I'm going to uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the positive four of this domain. All right, you can parentheses and we're going to union it. Take out the four to infinity. Okay. That is now my domain of B. All, right, all I did was uh, same thing I did in A. Okay. Because again, it, it was the same domain, right? Same domain, except this time and only, only this time because it's a division. Um, I have to exclude what makes that denominator equal to zero. Okay. Whew. All right. Is this a question? Oh, there it is. I see, I see it right in the middle. So this is, uh, I guess, c just basically combining everything we've done uh, so far. Okay, so we're gonna we have we are given f and we're given g, and we're, we are tasked to find f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g, and also find the domain of each. Okay, now we know we know that the domain of each of them, or at least the first three, are going to be the exact same, right? Because the domain of addition, subtraction, and multiplication are the exact same. And real quick, I'll go back and show you why. All right? Again, these three sentences—they're—they're they're pretty much the exact same. Again, after this, the, the comma, they say the same thing. So when we find the domain of A, it'll be the same as B and C. And then we have to do that one little tweak uh, that we did on the last example for D. So let's get started. All right, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and, and division. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite those as as um, the uh, combination, and then I'll just do the domain on on the next page, okay? Because I feel like I, know, I feel like it's pretty easy like this. So, anyways, f plus g. Well, f plus g that's going to be x plus two over x minus three, and then plus g, which is plus the square root of 4 minus x, b is f minus g, so it's going to basically be the exact same thing, but with a subtraction sign. c is going to be the multiplication of them, so it's just going to be x plus 2 over x minus 3, and it's going to be times the square root of 4 minus x, and then d is going to be, okay, so x plus 2 over x minus 3 all over the square root of 4 minus x, which we know is going to be x plus 2 over x minus 3 times the square root of 4 minus x. Okay. And again, uh, how did I go from how did I how did I go from here that, that being in the numerator to the denominator? Well, we touched on that earlier when I said it's basically. Have I already done this many? Yeah, when I said it's basically that. Okay, so that was a step. It's just I didn't actually write that out this time. Man. All right, now we're going to talk about the domains. So let's. Oh. Go ahead and use this next page. Resnip. Right now we're going to talk about the domains. All right. 
So let's do the same thing we did, we did before. What is the domain of f? So we're going to put a big D, little f. What is the domain of f? It looks like the domain of f is every single number except for 3. Okay, so we can write that one of two ways. Um, eh, probably should, again, the one of the ones I was thinking about is x cannot be equal to 3, but just for the sake of um, consistency, let's actually just go ahead and write that um, in interval notation, right? So it's every number but 3, so it's going to be from negative infinity to 3, unioned with 3 to infinity. In the domain of g, okay, well, what we have to do here is we have to set um, the radicand to greater than or equal to 0. Again, what is inside this radical must be greater than or equal to 0. Okay? If it's negative, then we know that we're going to have an imaginary number, and we don't really play with imaginary numbers, do we? So what we're going to do is, and again, you could probably do this in your head, but you would set the radicand to greater than or equal to 0 every single time, and then solve for x. We'd have negative x is greater than or equal to negative 4, or in other words, we'd have x is less than or equal to 4. Okay. So if I wrote that in interval notation, we would say from negative infinity to a positive 4, and it's a, or equal to, so we're going to put a bracket there. Okay. So that is the domain of f and the domain of g. So um, let's do the domains of a, b, and c. Okay, so the domain... Hmm, of A, B, and C are going to be the intersection of these, okay? Well, it appears is it's, it's going to get, um, eh, it's not that bad actually. Okay, so we're going all the way to 4, okay? So if we were to imagine these on a number line, we know that this one right here is basically every number but the number 3 easy. Well, this one just is, it goes from negative infinity to positive 4. So if we were trying to find the intersection there, then we would go from negative infinity to 3, and again, we're not including 3, union with, and again, we're starting with 3 again, all right, but instead of going all the way to infinity, we're going to be going just to 4, because that is the intersection of these two, uh, these two domains. Okay, so that's the domain of A, B, and C, and remember that, you know, it's pretty much the, the domain of D, except we are going to be taking out what make, what, um, the domain of that denominator, or what G is, right? And looking here, G appears to be uh, the same thing. Ah, nice. Okay, so we know that the dom I didn't have to really change pages there, I guess. Looking here, I know the domain of G uh, is, you know, negative infinity to 4, okay? So I'm going to be taking that out of my domain here, but that's it's the exact same thing. So uh, excluding 4, well, it's not the exact same thing. Okay, no, it's not the exact same thing. Let me, let me start over. Alrighty, so let's actually write this out instead of trying to visualize this. Um, okay, so this was f divided by g, okay? Well, we know if, like, if this was a problem we had in chapter 1 or chapter 2, I forget, if this is a problem we had in one of those chapters, you would say, okay, well, we cannot have the, nu the number 3, okay? which that's pretty easy. We know we can't have number three. We, 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 we are already excluding the number three. Okay, so that's good. All right, but now here we cannot have a four. Okay, and I, and I almost, I almost made, made this mistake just now, but we cannot have four. Okay, not, not that the, the going back to the domain here, 
uh, the domain of g go from negative infinity to positive 4 because that's what this is in a vacuum by itself. But since this is now in the uh, now in the denominator, okay, if we made it a 4, well, what is 4 minus 4? Well, that's 0. And what is the square root of 0? Well, that is 0. All right, and 0 times anything is going to be 0. And therefore, we see that we cannot actually include the number 4. Okay, so the domain of D is going to be pretty much the exact same thing, almost rather, except we cannot include the number 4. Domain of D. Okay, so again, that's, that's, that's one difference there. Uh, the domain of a, b, and c, we, we're allowed we're allowed to include the number four, okay? Because it's not a big deal um, in, in a, b, and c because I mean if we include four, that just becomes a zero, it becomes zero, it becomes a zero. That's okay, okay? But for d, if we if we let this be four, well four minus four is zero, square root of zero is zero, and then this entire problem becomes undefined, and so that's why we cannot include the number four. That's why I put a nice parentheses there. Okay, so we have we have seen composite functions before, okay? Except we didn't necessarily call them composite functions, all right? So let's well before I actually do this, let, let, let's let's let me tell you how you've seen them before, okay? So in the past, you might have you might have seen you know you might have had a problem that looked like this: f of x is equal to you know um, x plus Four. Okay. All right. You might have had a problem like this. All right. Well, when you evaluated the function at a value, you're, you're, you're essentially kind of making a composite function because what you're doing. All right. So let's do this. When we evaluated at let's say, uh, let's say four. I'm really on the four kick today. Then it's going to be plus four. Okay. And I know, I know, in the, you've also had homework problems that that kind of try to try to throw a little curveball at you, and you might the problem might say you know uh, something like x plus two. Oh, let's do that in a different color. X plus two. Okay, and then that would that's the same thing as you know putting x plus two in for x, x plus two, and then plus four. Okay, so you, you, you've seen composite functions before. We just didn't necessarily call them composite functions at the time, right? Uh, but this is how composite functions work. It's just, you're basically evaluating, instead of evaluating uh, the function at a value, you're going to evaluate the function at a function, and you're going to be given the function. Okay, so this is our definition. Um, the notation here is f o. It's like f o g f uh, f of g. Okay, so that's that's the phonetics there. Uh, f of g, and it's a composite uh, or the composition of f and g. And so you kind of wrap your head around what the notation is. And again, the notation here, you're going to see f of g of x. Okay, and that's the same thing as saying, well, f of g of x, but written like like so. Okay, now. Here's where I feel like I do lose some folks here. Um, again, in the past, we might have evaluated a function at a value, at 3, at 9, whatever. Okay, But now we're going to evaluate the function at a function. Okay, And so without trying to say too much here, let's go ahead and look, look at an example. And it probably help if I actually snipped the problems. Alrighty, so uh, A reads, find the function f of g. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to look at my f and I'm going to look at g. Okay, I'm going to treat g, this part right here, I'm going to treat that like like the number 4. Like the number 4 on that, you know, that, that mini example I, I tried to give. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this everywhere where I see x and f. And that's it. 
So let's let's try this real quick. Let's do um, okay. So let's denote this as a, and all right, f of x is equal to 4x plus 1. Okay. Well, now again, if I were if I were tasked to find to find f of if I were tasked to find f of let's use uh, 3 f of 3, then what I would do is I would just simply do you know do, do this and may, I'd turn the x into a 3, and then I would add 1. Okay. That I I evaluated it at <coughs> excuse me I evaluated it at some some value. Okay. Well now instead of evaluating at some value, I'm going to evaluate at a function, okay? Now, again, if the, the homework problem you might you may have seen in the past, you may have seen, okay, so evaluate this function at x over x minus 2, okay? And then at this point, it's, you know, becomes pretty, pretty easy, right? I change the x into x over x minus 2, and then plus 1, Right, and and that that's literally it. Okay, it's just this time, x over x minus two has a name, and that name is g. Okay, so again, that's the same thing as. This is the same thing as. F of g of x. So hopefully, hopefully that helped out a little bit. Um, uh, I don't know. That's, that's that's really all I got. But we'll do we'll do all of them though. That's uh, that that'll help. All right. So B. All right. Find G of H. So again, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and write uh, the function G. And again, oh, here's something else. Uh, something that, that helped me um, do composite functions as I when I started out. Um, and of course, you know this, this this isn't the first time you've seen composite functions. Um, you you've you've definitely seen them in high school, uh, whether or not um, that was recently or not. I don't know, but uh, you've seen them before. But you might you might have you know noticed that well, you're just basically putting um, you're you're working backwards. You're putting g into f. You're putting h into g. You're putting g into f and F and that into h. Okay, so. That's basically what we're doing. It's just I'm trying. Uh, I was trying to help you wrap your head around how and why this is the way it is. But anyways, um, let's do uh, b g of h. So uh, again, if I wrote g of x is equal to x over x minus two. Okay. Let's see how did I do this one? Put it in red. Okay. So then if I did <coughs> g of h, well what is h? h is the square root of x plus 3. So all I have to do here is write the square root of x plus 3. Okay, And then of course that just becomes, well, the square root of x plus 3 over, oh, we need an equal sign there, don't we? Okay, a little, let's, let's just make this a little bit lower. All right, and that's that's B. <laughs> uh, again, all, all I did was plug in H into 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 G. Okay. And C looks a little rough, but it's actually not too bad, uh, mainly because we've already done part of it. Okay. So looking at H of F of G. Okay. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug I'm gonna plug G into F. So I'm gonna find F of G. Well, we are, we already know what f of g is. Uh, f of g is um, so let's snip this. Ah, dead gummit. All right, again, I, I got to figure out that library thing. Um, we know f of g is four times x. Uh, 
f of g is equal to, and I forgot. I guess I can just do the math here, huh? Uh, plugged in, I'd say, 4, and then it was x over x minus 2, and then plus 1. Okay, well that, that was f of g. Again, something we've already done. Well, now I need to um, plug that into h. Okay, so it, it's going to get very ugly very fast. So, uh, again, let's do this. This is c. You know, h of x. Well, that's not say h of x. Let's just go ahead and, and skip that step. And let's just go ahead and do h of and then this. Okay, so we're going to write that. 4 x minus 2 over or under x plus 1 okay so that's all going to be under that radical that's ridiculous but okay so plus 1 right um, just like that and Ooh, I gotta get going. Um, oh, and then plus three. Then plus three. Right. Uh, and that is C. Okay. Uh, D. We gotta evaluate f of g of four, or state this undefined. Well, again, we this is pretty easy. We um, we have f of g, well, luckily, right here with us. All right. So we need to evaluate f of g at four. So we got we have to plug in a four everywhere where we see um, an x and again this is the, this is just kind of kind of cheating thing right where it's like it's multiple problems in one this is f of g and then it is of four so I just I, I did a composite function which I already did nice for uh, good for me and then it's of four so we evaluated at four so this is what we're gonna do like we'll just do some mental math here we'll do we'll put D down here uh, let's not do mental math. Let's just rewrite it. Make it easy. And then put it in blue. No, put it in red. Alrighty, so, um... 4 divided, again, it's PEMDAS, right? PEMDAS, so parentheses. So 4 divided by 4 minus 2, which is 2. So 4 over 2 is, uh, is 2. 4 over 2 is 2, yeah. And then 2 times 4 is 8. There's 2 in here. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So this is equal to 9. All right. All right, so I told you guys that we are going to have some more fun um, regarding, you know, the uh, the funness of looking at graphs like this. Well, um, maybe I should snip this before. Alrighty, so. It reads, use the graph to evaluate each expression. So f of g of 4, g of uh, f of negative 3, f of f negative 1, so on and so forth. So on the previous example of this, if you recall, uh, I needed to um, do the algebra functions. All right, this time we're doing the composite functions. All right, so we're, this is going to gonna work a little bit differently, a little bit weird, but it is, again, it's fun when, once you get to do it. And you're going to be like, man, I wish I had more of these on, on my homework. Um, but what you're going to do first is you're going you're to find out what g of 4 is, okay? And then once you figure out what g of 4 is, you're going to plug that into f. You're going to plug that value into f, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. So uh, I guess we'll do it down, down here. Hmm, how should I do this? Trying to figure out how I can explain this, uh, so you so you can, you know, kind of kind of write this and follow along when you do your homework. Um, well, let's just let's just start and see what happens. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to define is g of four. Okay, and that's going to be this, that's going to be the case for all these. So this would be f of negative three, f of negative one, g of four, and then f of one. Okay, so that's the first thing you're finding. And again, like I said, you're working backwards. Okay, so what is g of four? Well, g of four. 
Okay, so if I look at my, my graph over here, G is the blue line, and at 4 we have a negative 2. Okay, so G of 4 is going to be equal to negative 2. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find F of negative 2. Okay, well what is F of negative 2? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, looking at my graph, I'll go over here to negative 2, and it looks like it is a positive 2. Right. And I guess that's that's a good way to, to go about uh, expressing it. Okay, so that's my solution uh, is is two. Okay, it, it ends up right there. So let's do b. Okay, so again we're working backwards. So what is f of negative three? So let's write that f of negative three. What is f of negative three? We look at my graph. F is a red line. Negative three. It looks like it is. Looks like it's five. So f of negative 3 is a positive 5. And then I'm going to look for g of ooh, g of positive 5. Okay, because again, we went um, f of negative 3, and then whatever whatever that was, which we got was 5, and we plug that into g. Okay. So what is g of 5? We go over here to 5, and it looks like it's negative 3. See how, see, see how I think this is fun? Hopefully you do. Maybe I'll get an email being like, man, I had a blast doing homework this time. Uh, I guess I, yeah, we'll, we'll go and put C over here. Let's do C. I think I can fit it. All right, so same thing. Uh, we're just going backwards, but this time we're using F twice. No big deal. All right, so we're going to start out with F of negative 1. Okay, f of negative 1, uh, go, we go over here to negative 1, it looks like it's 1. Okay, and then we're going to do f of 1. And you know what, I just had an idea. Let, let me do negative 2, negative 2. Just color coordinate this to, to, to really showcase where I'm getting them. And what's going where. think that might help. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, what is f of 1? It looks like f of 1 is 5. So again, I go over here to 1, I go up to f, looks like it's 5. Okay. I think, I think that helps. Right. Let's do the uh, d. d is going to be g of g. Okay, so what is g of 4? Well, we look at the blue line, we go over to 4, it looks like it's a negative 2. So, shoot, did I put that in blue or yellow? Blue. Ooh. So, what did I say? Yeah, negative 2. Okay. And then we're going to do, and then of course it's g of negative 2 now. So, g, let's do a better g. g of negative 2. Be equal to well, what is g of negative two? It looks like it is a positive four. Okay, now e is equally as fun, right? So it might look a little, a little messed up, but again, you're just you're just going backwards, backwards, backwards. That's it. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna do what is f of one? Well, f of one. It looks like it is a 5, so again, I go over here to 1, I go up, where's the red line? There it is, 5. So it looks like it's 5. And then we're going to do g of 5, which is equal to, okay, well, g of 5, I go over here to 5, it looks like it is a negative 3. Um, let's do this in yellow. Negative 3. And then lastly, we have f of negative 3. f of negative 3, which is, uh, we go over here, negative 3, positive 5. Okay. And that's that. All right, this last part, um, I have to I have to run it at 2 o'clock. I have a meeting at 2. Um, 
I know that's during my lecture, but I, I, I scheduled it thinking I'd be done in time. I'm sorry. Uh, but this is the last example, so we, could, we can probably chuck through at least two of these, maybe. Um, so, okay. So next, we're going to talk about the domain of composites. So we talked about the domain of the algebra functions. Now we're going to talk about the domain of the composites. Okay. Now, admittedly, <sighs> this part super 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 duper 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 sucks and i'm really sorry it's just the way it is okay um furthermore this this crazy definition that that's given here i'm gonna snip it anyways but i don't like it um if if you if then if you prefer to go by this definition you're more than welcome to um, plus, not to mention, uh, whenever, if you do um, happen to look at the, the notes and the videos and, and the interactive video there, you just click on it and it'll have you a nice little uh, video clip doing the problems. Uh, they will also do it the way the textbook does it, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Okay, um, And so hopefully that helps out at least some of you because you, know, you, get, you get kind of like a, a second opinion, you know. So... Uh, this is this is a second opinion, but my my initial opinion is this definition sucks. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about it, All right? So starting from the top, we've got suppose f and g are functions for a number x to be in a domain of f of g or yeah f of g x must be in the domain of g and g of x must be in the domain of f. Okay, well, what does all that mean? Ugh. All right. So to determine the domain of f of g, follow the two-step process outlined below. Now this is where I think that um, it really kind of hurts first and second year college students and especially non-mathematics students. Uh, and on, on the top of that, I'm a mathematics student, right? Even the, even, and, and I still think this, this definition is stupid, but let's just read it and I'll tell you why. So step one, find the domain of G. Well, that's, that's, that's pretty darn easy. I, I, I can do that all day. Step two, now step, what in the world is this saying? Step two, exclude from the domain of G all values of x for which g of x is not in the domain of f. <laughs> All right. Now the thing is, may, may, maybe I'm uh, overinflating this, but but to me, I just don't feel like that is a a nice definition for you know first and second year college students, especially for uh, college students that are not going into mathematics, that do not care about the rigors of mathematics. This definition, uh, step two, sucks. So here is how I um, determine the domain of f of g. Okay. So uh, obviously it says find the domain of G. That's easy peasy. So we're going to find the domain of G. Actually, should do. We'll do that. Okay. So the domain. Oh, let's do this. The domain of f of G. Okay. Is going to be the domain of G. Right. And this, and I can actually see where where maybe maybe this definition kind of breaks down. Um, but it'll be all right for us. All right, intersects with the domain of f of g. Okay, so to me this makes a lot more sense. And when we do it, when we do an example, you're 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 gonna see why. Okay, so the domain of f of g, the domain of our composite function, that domain is going to be the intersection of g. And again, g is going to be the one that we plug in. Okay, of g, and it's going to be intersected with whatever my composite function is. So let's do an example before I uh, talk in circles and, and confuse everybody, including myself. Okay, so first things first. We're going to, we're going to um, so find the domain of f of g. Well, first of all, we need to find f of g. Okay, so let me put it up here. A. So uh, f of g. So it looks like f of g. It looks like what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in g of x. I'm plugging in I'm plugging in this everywhere where I see an x and f. Okay. So that's not abundantly difficult. Not right now. So we're gonna do f. Sorry. We're gonna do f of g of x is equal to. Got a negative 10 up top, and this looks like the square root of 5 minus x. minus 4. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, in order to find the, the domain here, 
um, um, what, what I wrote down, and honestly, it's just, this, the step ones are the same, right? Find the domain of G. Well, we're going to find the domain of G. Okay, well, let's find the domain of G. All right, so G is this one. So let's, um, let's see. What is the domain of G? Well, the domain of G looks like it appears to be, um, you know, 5 minus X. You know, we, we again, the process is we make that greater than or equal to zero. We subtract five from both sides. Oops, that's that. Subtract five from both sides. And then we've got x is less than or equal to five, okay? So it's gonna be all the values that are less than or equal to five. So, or in other words, from negative infinity to five, okay? Alrighty. Now next up, what we're gonna do is we're going to figure out um, what the domain of the composite function actually is. Okay, so basically, I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to figure out what the domain is. Okay, well, I know that I know that I can my denominator cannot be equal to zero. Right, it cannot be equal to zero. Um, so let's let's um, put this let's put it down here, so I can really manipulate it and not get in the way. Okay, so, so there's a little, little bit of thinking involved here, um, but I know that this denominator all right, cannot be equal to zero. So I have to figure out what makes this x, what makes that x make this term equal to a positive 4, because then we have 4 minus 4, which is zero. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. If not, I'm going to say it one more time, all right? So we have we have two terms in my denominator. This the square root of five um, minus x, and we have a negative four. Okay. Well, in order, the only way this denominator will be equal to zero is if this first term is equal to four, right? Because that would be four minus four, and four minus four is equal to zero. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that denominator, and I'm going to set it equal to four. Okay, so the square root of 5 minus x is equal to um, 4. Okay, well, solving for, uh, solving for x, we would have to square both sides, right? And we would end up with a um, 5 minus x is equal to 16. And then if we subtract at 5 from both sides, we have negative x is equal to 11, or in other words, x is equal to a negative, oops, x is equal to a negative 11, okay? Um, and then, unfortunately, at, at this point, to, to even make sure that the domain is, is accurate, if you recall, I said that there are, there are moments where you actually have to, where you do actually have to check to see if your solution is in the domain, and in those moments, it's when you square both sides. Okay, so we square both sides, so we have to check if this negative 11 does work, and it does work, right? Because 5 minus a negative 11 is 5 plus 11, which is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4, so it does work. Okay, so I've said a lot right now, and I, I kind of went everywhere, and I really hate it. I, um, but what you need to do is. Uh, Take what your composite function is, okay? Take that composite function and then figure out what the what that domain is. And in this particular case, the domain is every single number you can possibly think of, except for negative 11. Okay? I cannot use negative 11. If I plugged in a negative 11 here, again, well, 5 um, plus 11 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So if x was negative 11, we would have a 4 here. 4 minus 4 is 0, and therefore that is not in the domain. Okay? Now I did say a lot. I said it fast. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. Um, so x cannot be equal to 11 in my composite function. So if I was to follow along with what I what I wrote on the previous page, okay, and let's just go ahead and write that. I said the domain of g intersected with the domain of f of g. Okay. Well, what was the domain of g? Well, that's written in yellow there. All right, and it's going to be intersected with what was the domain of f of g? I said it was every number but 11, right? So it was every number except for a positive 11. Okay. All right. 
So what what is the intersection of those two functions, or I'm sorry, those two intervals? Well, um, it's pretty easy because I mean this isn't even in this interval at all, right? Because I mean we stop at five, so we don't we don't have to worry about that. The only thing we have to worry about is not including. Um, oh Sherman, why do you do that? It's it's negative eleven, isn't it? Darn it! All right, I got in a hurry and and I messed up. It was negative eleven. All right. So the intersection there is going to be every single number here, except for the negative eleven number that I got for the uh, domain of f of g. So the domain is going to be from negative infinity to negative 11 unioned with negative 11 to 5. Okay. That's the domain and